Hello, welcome to the video. This is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I am doing a double density druid. So a double density druid means that I am playing a druid on a playthrough, except there are twice as many enemies at all points in the game. We can't copy act bosses, at least not that I know of. If you know of a way to copy act bosses, let me know. But as you can tell, this is the cold plains, well the blood more at this point. And I am being followed by champions and a boss pack. That's usually not like that, usually there's only one pack. So basically what I did is I doubled the amount of bosses and the amount of enemies. So if like the Cold Plains usually has like two or three bosses, it now has four to six. And that gets you into situations like these, where this is the Dark Wood, which is really dark when you record it on PC apparently. I never knew. But as you can tell, that's three boss packs following me. Well, that usually is just one, maybe two if you're unlucky. Or lucky depending on how much you want experience. And it's immediately followed up by a bunch of goat men here. And this is just not the way normal usually looks. But as usual we do head up to the counters. Because we need some runes. We need Tear, Rel and Tal and F. So getting a Tear, Tal drop on my first run is amazing. I end up buying a 2 socket staff so I can put a Tear, Rel into that. And I go ahead and put the Tear in immediately. So it gets me the 2 mana after each kill. And on the second drop I get the Tal and the Ath for the stealth. And make my way towards the smith, who I very easily kill. Because the one thing that does happen when you do a run like this is I am way higher level than usual. I mean I'm level 17 and I'm still in Act 1. Where I find this helmet with plus 2 firestorm and I just immediately dump a bunch of topazes in it. Because I'm gonna need some gear. And head towards Ontario, who I just kindly evaporate. As I complete my leaf, my Tyrell for plus 3 fire skills, those work on every character, not only on the sorceress like a lot of people seem to think. And then in Act 2 in the Halls of the Dead you get rooms like these where, yeah this is just not how this usually looks. Those are a lot of skeletons and a lot of unravelers. And the way you want to go through those is just by clearing out as much as you can and then making your way towards the unravelers. The Arcane Sanctuary as well, definitely rush hour traffic over here. And these are the areas where you can really see how much more density actually happens when you make it times two. Because this is just not what a normal Arcane Sanctuary usually looks like. Well, as I just mentioned, I am a lot higher level than usual, so I kind of make chopped mincemeat out of Duriel. And I head into the Kuros Bazaar for the Ruined Temple where I am greeted at the door. As I make my way through the Kuros Causeway. Where there's just three boss packs waiting for me and a might aura. And things are everywhere and everything is just in the way it needs to die. And it is of course followed up by the Council. One more thing that you can see on the screen by the way is that items have numbers behind them. That's the item level because I'm playing with a mod. I like to put on a bunch of quality of life. So I like to see the item levels. I like to give the Tome of Town Portal and the Tome of Identification 60 scrolls instead of 20. Because those are just the nitpicky things that it should have done 20 years ago. Mephisto draws me a quilted armor which is a grey form. And I decide to give it to my mercenary. And for our Hellforge we get a Nefruin. As I go ahead and upgrade my Shaker. So I have two perfect Topaz and a normal Topaz. So one thing that happens if you kill a lot of stuff. Is that you have way more things like Amethysts and stuff. Topaz, Gems in general. So you can very easily get triple Gemmed Helms. I also end up switching my armor for the Diablo fight. I want the 20 fire resist against him. Because well he just uses fire. And here we have a battle of the firestorms. His is bigger, so I don't want to talk about it. It's not the size that matters, it's what you do with it after all. As I dodge some more fire. All I want him to do is just walk around. So him just running and stuff is just great for me because that deals him a lot of damage. I dodge the lightning, dodge the lightning again. And the demon from hell keeps spouting lightning at me. So I'm just dodging and I'm just playing inventory Tetris while dodging because I can't really stand and stop to shoot back at him. Because if I tank that beam I will die. A lot. Well exactly once to be honest. And I just want him to move like he's just standing there spamming stuff at me like standing stills for cheaters. Just move man take damage. So I decide to walk up to him and just uh, throw fire at him. Which he can still do better but we still don't talk about that. 
and I get the kill and make my way towards Eldritch. Even with double density, you want to farm in Act 5 because it's just a very easy way to get experience. And I end up getting a plus 3 tornado helmet. And in this part of the run, I was kind of conflicted on do I want to be a fire druid or a tornado druid because I like playing the fire druid more. But I don't know if it's powerful enough on double density. So I was like kind of conflicted, just gonna see how far I can go as a fire druid. But that plus three NATO helm really pulls me to watch just going for NATOs. In the meanwhile, on the screen, we are fighting Bale, who just spams stuff at me as well. It's a family thing for them. And I just want him to move. The more they move around, the more damage they take from me. And here you can already start to tell that fire damage, even against like Bill Normal, isn't that great. The fire elemental druid is a much worse boss killer than the tornado druid, so that's one of the big considerations there. I get my mercenary back, so maybe he can entice Bill to walk around a bit and also hurry up the fight. The one thing that the fire druid has going for him is that his AoE is much better though, so that's a consideration on that side. As we go ahead and kill Bill, make our way towards the den of evil, and just look at how busy this den is. This is just not what a den looks like usually there's so much stuff here and this is the normal den because i forgot it so if your normal den looks like this check if you have a mod going i also just decided to go ahead and save kane in nightmare just to check what tristram looks like and now it's believable that they got conquered so man that's a lot of fallen in here we make our way towards the tower cellar level 5 because we need to grab ourselves some runes again so the tower cellar level 5 has a couple of boss packs Meaning two goat packs, excuse me, three goat packs. And the fallen pack there. So yeah, that is what your average counters run looks like in this mod. And there we have her, the console. So we will tall, tall, art, am, art, soul. That is a spirit and a lore. Those are the two big ones that we want. During farming we also end up finding a plated belt that is a Psycon's belt which has some life and some resists on it. And I also end up finding a 4 socket partisan which is amazing because that is another rule where they can make and that is a Ral Teatel Sol which makes for a insight. And that does a lot of damage and it gives a meditation aura so you get a lot of mana from it as well. With our mercenary complete and our runes found, we go to the final place where the fire druid is definitely better, and Dario, who drops us an am rune, and there was one in the bottom as well, and she drops me a fortuitous ring of fortune, like these are really rare, this is a 32mf ring, these go up to 40, but it's just, like, that's such a sick roll on a ring, like that's the first one I've ever found. I also make a rhyme as I head towards Radamond. And here you can see the problems with the fire druid really starting, like those mages over there, or that mage over there is fire immune. And I also drop a crystal sword, so that's a four socket crystal sword, and because of that mage I decide to go ahead and do my respec, so I go ahead and take my Telthul, Ot and Am. And I roll a spirit, and it's a 25, mwah, mwah, mwah. So it's 25 to 35 faster cast rate, and the other mods I have no clue of the rolls, it's just the faster cast rate that's the only one that matters. I end up going to 70 strength because I found a 4 socket gothic plate that I put some gems in and this is the build that I'm going for. So that's a nato druid, very standard but I figured I'd show it. As I make my way towards the maggot lair. So that was the maggot lair. Just kidding, I know what y'all want to see. So this is what the maggot lair looks like, it's uh, busy. Those are a lot of beetles. Yes, a lot of beetles. I mean, we are just one yellow submarine away from a complete album there. As I make my way towards Duriel. Well, I'm way over leveled for this at this point, so it's kind of a very easy fight. So I just walk up to him, stand in his face and shoot him. And I make my way towards the Freya jungle where the boss packs are raining down on me. And you can tell just how many items there are, just how many things I've had to go through. And the Might Aura is still there. And not only is it still there, it's being followed up by yet another boss pack of birds. And I'm just like, okay, this should be the waypoint, so I want to go down here. 
And yet another boss pack. And that's just how the flare jungle goes. And I go ahead and find a second crystal sword. So I make my second spirit. Will this be above 25? It's worse. Just actually worse. And all of that nonsense is followed up by the console. We just kind of evaporate because we're way over leveled for this. I'm usually like level 30, 32, 35 around here. And I believe I was like level 50 or something at this point. As I go ahead and almost commit seppaku on a bunch of dolls. Anyway, all of that is followed up with Mephisto. Who we once again just face tank and shoot at. So yeah, just lots of tornadoes while he's trying to pass gas on us. He drops a rare hunters, guys. But I have a plus three NATO helm. And the planes of despair are really showing why they are called that. That's a lot of souls over there. Just so many souls. Like this place has some serious soul, but not the kind I like. And it's just everywhere. Like there's so many of them just lightning everywhere. All you're trying to do is just evade the lightning at this point and try to find a safe spot. And I decide to just walk all the way back towards the entrance. But there are some more souls there as well. And I'm just trying to like carve out a bit of space where I can just work from. That's just quiet that I can retreat to. But instead I find a bunch of champion souls. But I do end up making it towards a spot that's kind of quiet. And by kind of quiet I mean there's only three souls at the start. And then it's followed up by a million of them. I'm just very happy that I have good lightning resist because oh my god this Plains of Despair is insane. But yeah very aptly named. I mean look at that that's like what 10 million souls? I mean who comes up with this many souls like why would anyone do this to themselves? And what I'm doing here as a strategy is basically just casting the Oak Sage as a distraction. I find a Tolwar in the River of Flame which is the Blade of Alibaba and make my way towards Diablo. Who, as you can tell, is just taking so much damage from me. It's kind of nuts. I can actually just face tank his fire as well. I can just stand there and kill him. The advantages of being very overleveled. And for Act 5, well, things are a bit busy up here. I want to go up the stairs, but they're like, nah, man, you're not going to go up the stairs. So I try and make my way through, almost die in the process. Go back for round 2, kill these other guys, and make my way through. And I make my way towards the frozen river where things are very much alive with the sound of violence. Because there's just stuff everywhere. I mean, look at that, it's so many, like, what am I supposed to do? I end up going back and forth between the Crystalline Passage and the Frozen River and just trying to kill as many things as I can before I need to run out again. And it ends up with me being able to kind of carve a path through all of this after a while. But it definitely took a few attempts. And you'd think the busy part is done, but no, not in this kind of playthrough because it's a double density playthrough after all. So there is a million things waiting for us. And I decided to just walk around. And the best way to play this is really just being like, okay, where am I not being shot at all the time? That is now my home base. And from that spot, I am working towards where I want to go. You can try running through, but it'll go bad. Oh, by the way, I used a randomizer to do this. It's a known randomizer. If you Google Diablo 2 Resurrected Randomizer, you will find it. As I head in towards a fanaticism pack. And I end up deciding being like, nah, I'm just gonna go ahead and not fight that. So I take a turn here, head towards the other side of the river. And head towards Anya, who I go ahead and save before making my way into the Ancient's Way. Where I find a Lem rune. And head towards the ancients who are cursed and stuff. But I'm so overleveled it really doesn't matter at all. I mean I'm very easily killing them. And at the worldstone keep level 3 I end up finding mage fists. 
Those give plus one to fire skills and 20 FCR. So now I'm kind of like, ah, maybe I should have stayed a fire druid. But the plus three NATO helm is so good. Because NATO, as you can tell, is way better against bosses than the fire skills are. And once again, I just casually walk up to a boss and shoot stuff at him until he dies. I mean, the bosses are usually some of the easier parts, but the bosses are definitely the most easy part of this. So that was hell. Time for some terror zones, because the Ontario terror zone was available. And I end up finding a gothic shield in there, which is a the ward. And I also go ahead and complete my things before heading into hell. So I continue with the tower cellar for a shield rune, so I can make a shield full lamb, which is a treachery for the mercenary. And I end up socketing my ward in here as well. And put a perfect diamond in it so it has 62 resist all at this point. Although I do end up regretting that later but you'll see what happens. My resistance were pretty bad so I decide to just gamble some gear. Because one other thing that happens in a run like this is you find a million things so you have all of the gold you could ever want. So I just casually upgrade a bunch and end up with pretty decent resistances. Like this is fine for hell. But yeah level 68 I'm usually like at the end of the game at this point. But let's start hell by killing corpse fire. And running away from a million vile things, vile lancers, vile hunters, shadow vax over here. Who drops me heavy bracers and those are triangles and you can see by the speed I'm equipping those that I know what those do. And here I find a unique amulet and I'm just kind of curious like what'll it be. I think my gear is pretty good at this point. And it ends up being a eye of Etlich. Which isn't better what I'm wearing, but I do end up making an impu as well. And I get a 20 faster run walk, 18 strength, 17 resist all poison bone coronet. And that's kind of insane. If I was a necro, that would be a GG helmet for sure. And in the catacombs level 1, we have might aura, we have concentration aura, we have curse, we have holy freeze. We've got it all. So I'm just kind of just making my way through this entire mess. And now I'm very glad that I respect into tornado because all of this is fire immune. But yeah, blessed aim and might together are very dangerous because it means that things will hit and they will hit very hard. So that's another aura down is what I thought, but apparently not. Luckily the holy freeze is gone because it's just annoying. Not that it stops the faster cast rate, but it stops you running away, which is just not great. And at this point I'm just looking for where the might aura is coming from. And there is an aura. It might be might, it might be blessed aim and it turns out it's the might aura so i'm rid of that and there's the guy that has the blessed aim aura and now everything in there is dead so i go ahead and that's was and daddy all who even with 2k life i have a hard time thinking like hell and dario sneakily hits pretty damn hard i mean if my oak sage died i have a problem but luckily he doesn't and she drops me nothing then for the Claw Viper Temple level 2, we get a bunch of Embalmed and that's not scary at all. And then we have this giant pile of Salamanders heading our way. We start off with Curse and killing my Oak Sage. So I run back and just use the Oak Sage to kind of lure them out a bit. Oak Sage is so nice, it's just a, like a bait that you can cast everywhere, it's so great. Oh and it also grants you a million life. And after that I can't deny it anymore, I have to go into the Maggot Lair. So this is what the Maggot Lair looks like with double density. Every single millimeter of this area you will have to kill an enemy. Like set a step, take two steps back. Set a step, kill one enemy, grab the loot, set a step, kill an enemy, set one step, kill an enemy, set one step. This is how you do the entire Maggot Lair on double density. Just one step at a time. I also find a monarch and this is why I regret using my socket quest because this means that I can't just automatically have four sockets into it. I will have to roll for it, which is a risk. You can get one to four sockets and once things are physical immune, you only have your hurricane to deal with them. So that takes especially long, but one by one by one by one, we are slowly but surely, but mostly slowly, making our way through the maggot lair. Because we find another physical immune. And it's still the maggot lair level 1. But luckily there's still more millimeters to fight about. I mean this just feels like basically trench warfare. Where you're just like okay I kill one thing, set a step. Kill one thing, set a step. And as you can tell the area around Cold Warm the Burrower is 
pretty busy. But it's actually so busy here that things just lock up, which is definitely me getting lucky. There's just so much stuff here that they can't move. So I get to very easily kill all of them. So for the Monarch roll, I get a perfect ruby, a Tell rune, and an M rune. And I go for the roll and I get three sockets, so that's crap because I needed four. And after that disappointing moment, we had to watch even more disappointment in the Arcane Sanctuary. Where I use Storm Portals to dodge a bunch of ghosts who are otherwise very tedious to deal with. It's just waiting around for the hurricane to kill them. So especially if they're extra fast, it's very hard to deal with them. So what I'm doing is just walking back, leaving behind a town portal on the way there. And just maneuvering my way towards the waypoint so I can use the waypoint in town. Take the town portal back and get rid of them that way. Because now they're at the waypoint, so that's not safe anymore. But I just need to not forget that. I find a Ballista which is a Parisa and I get another pack of ghosts so I have to do the same little trick again. So I cast my Oak Sage to lure them behind me. They are very easily killing it but every single time I make a few steps and lure them with me again. I do have to be very careful though that other boss pack is still hanging out around here as well. But then nowhere to be seen. I don't know what happened to them, but they were not there and it made me very happy. After that area, we make our way towards the Canyon of the Magi where the bugs are alive. And yeah, there's definitely a bug problem here because just look at that. That is literally screens full of bugs. And once again, you just deal with this by killing the spawners first, killing the bosses first. Just try and get a kill. Stop the chain, basically. Like, things are spawning. You can't stop that immediately, but just make it spawn less and less until nothing is spawning and you can kill everything very nicely is the way to do this. But a lot of playing a double density run is just being aware of, okay, how can I deal with this? How can I kill this? What makes sure that I can do this safely? Where do I need to be on the screen? What's the area that I'm working from? Like all of those things you have to be very aware of while playing a run like this because there's just so much stuff coming at you all the time. I tried this run before with a paladin and I died in Nightmare Act 3 with that paladin because there was just too much happening. Although to be fair, I did that run with randomized enemies. So I had like dolls everywhere and souls everywhere and stuff, which was very fun, but it was way harder than this. In the meanwhile, I am stacking up some tornadoes against Duriel, who just isn't a problem at this point. I have 2200 life, there's no way he can kill me, just none. So he dies, drops me a bunch of town portals, as I make my way towards the spider forest after that. I am greeted by fanaticism and a second boss back over there with fire enchanted which is also pretty dangerous. And if that isn't enough for that area there are a few more boss packs. If you're ever like man there are not enough boss packs in this area. Well this game's got you covered because that's the third boss pack going down. I didn't even see them. That was the fourth one going down. The fifth one is there still fighting. And there we have Black Mame who is the fifth boss in this little alcove here. And he runs away and I'm like, yeah, I'm finally through. I finally got all of them. But no, there is another boss pack there. So that's six boss packs in that little alcove over here. I'm sorry, what was I saying? Six? No, I saw the seventh one down there. So that's another fanaticism aura down there. But that wasn't it. So that's seven boss packs and that makes eight boss packs in this one little alcove. So yeah, if you're ever in need of more boss packs, play the game like this. You'll enjoy it. And as you can imagine, this is a lot harder to do than the regular game. You do kind of tend to get used to it. At a certain point, something in your mind just goes like, okay, there's just stuff everywhere all the time, so deal with it. But it takes some getting used to for sure. So that's eight boss packs down. I still see a fanaticism aura. So that's nine boss packs in total in that little alcove. Which is just nuts. And you get areas like these where there just are one or two more spiders than usual. So we literally have a blockage of spiders. Usually you just kind of go around this area and be like, yeah, I can just ignore everything. That's not an option in this. There is just too much stuff happening. And it turns out that I can't deal with Zag because he's fire and physical immune. And there's no way my mercenary is killing him with the holy freeze aura damage. So I decide to go around it where I am greeted by some gloom bats. And here I end up luring Sussark around a pillar and making my way with a run. And I'm basically just hoping that I have enough time to grab the eye here. So I grab Kalim's eye and, and run like hell to get out of here. 
Because I can't wait for the Freya dungeon. So anyway, yeah, that's dolls and physical immunes with fanaticism. So I nope out immediately. There's not a chance in the world for me to go into that Freya dungeon. And I just go ahead and make my way through the Freya jungle where I end up finding a unique ward. Anyway, in the lower Kuras, I find myself an Eldritch Orb, and I would love that if it wasn't Sorcerers only, because that is a lot of extra fire skill damage. I would respec for 17% fire skill damage. And it is followed up by the Ruined Temple, and that has definitely been ruined for me with this spawn. So that's like three boss packs with fanaticism in there, a physical fire immune again, and it's all just so miserable. I'm cursed. Like nothing good is there, so I decide to just well walk away from my problems. And I go ahead and try the other entrance. And now the physical fire immune has followed me, but he actually dies to my hurricane, so at least that's manageable. I mean definitely slow, but manageable. And there we have the source of the fanaticism on the other side, so that's a bunch of ghoul lords. As meteors rain down from the sky and I go ahead and just lure a bunch of them out, try and kill them one by one. Also they are definitely cheating because I can't cast meteor past a wall and they can, so just so you know. It's like Mario Kart all over again, the AI is cheating. So yeah, Night Lords hit for like 900 every hit when they're fanaticism and you're cursed, so that's very dangerous. So I go to town and heal again and just take one of those wailing beasts at a time, just like on Friday night. And he's a magic and fire immune, but that doesn't matter to me because I do physical damage, so I slowly but surely manage to get him on his own and kill him. And there we have the source of the fanaticism and with him gone, the ruined temple is conquered and we move along towards the second attempt of the flayer dungeon. And it's physical immunes again and with might aura as well so i'm like i'm i need to get through here so i just decide to run it just hope for the best and get towards the council who are well they're not that super hard on a normal druid so especially a double density one that's like way higher level i just very easily clear them i pick up kaleem's fill also it's a perfect shot as usual with the druid i have to have this joke in at least once every tornado druid video anyway casually just clearing out the council like they just melt even with the stone skin they're just taking so much damage you're thinking like okay where are the dolls we haven't seen any dolls well no worries Durant's level 2 got you covered so that's the first pack of dolls i encounter and literally just a few meters ahead there's the second pack of dolls so that's cursed dolls but i do have a mercenary so he can tank them a bit while i shoot at them And there's the third pack fighting for the waypoint. And at this point I was like, well, I can reset, just farm a good entrance towards level 3, but I decided to just go for it. Which was rewarded with me getting to level 3, so that was me being Conviction, Aura and Curse, which is always a good time. As I go ahead and just try and get some positioning in so I can kill some stuff. But yeah, Aura Enchanted, Lightning Enchanted, Cursed is just like a wish list of things that will absolutely murder your face off. But with my wishlist completed we go towards Mephisto where we just stand around and go ahead and equip our magic finding gear. And because we equipped our magic finding gear we are going to be rewarded with all sorts of items. I can feel it now. Is it gonna be a Shaco? Is it gonna be a Totemic Mask? No, it's a Mephisto Soulstone and other crap. Which we take into Act 4, where the Planes of Despair are once again being very true to their name, with even the entrance being so filled up with assholes that I can just do nothing else but clear out everything. I mean, all I want to do here is just get through, kill Ishwal and get towards Diablo. I don't even care about my health watch anymore, I just want to get through. But instead I have to deal with all of these idiots. And trying to aim your tornado around a door is bad it's so bad like i don't even know if i'm hitting anything at this point i'm just kind of like you can see me wiggling my mouse being like am i hitting something please tell me i'm hitting something but honestly what i think is happening is the holy freeze damage from my mercenary plus my hurricane is killing this guy and if i was hitting anything the guys behind him would have died so so i move forward and i still don't think i'm hitting anything but now i'm hitting something because that flash bonner is taking damage but man do you have to get close it's so dangerous 
Also, in the meanwhile, I'm consistently cursed and conviction hour. At a certain point during this run, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be either cursed or conviction hour at all times. Like, there's no getting away from it. And the river of flame greets me with a ton of blood maggots. But luckily the tornadoes do end up going in any of the directions I want them to go, which is basically not backwards. And hey Faso, the armorer is waiting for us with his might aura. And once again immune to fire. In the end I do think I'm very happy with respecting to tornado, but it was definitely a close call and I wiggled and waggled on it a bunch. And the biggest thing for that is well that I enjoy playing fire druid more. It's one of my favorite builds of all time. So yeah, from the Hellforge I get a Gull Rune, which is basically useless as I make my way towards the Chaos Sanctuary where things once again are very busy with Might Auras and other scary things. Basically if I get cursed and something hits me with Might, I am gonna cry. So go ahead and deal with this. And inside the Chaos Sanctuary itself there's just a ton of Venom Lords. But all he's here is just such a high level that he can tank stuff here. Like usually your mercenary just evaporates at stuff like this. Just like he looks at it and he's like nah I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, be dead at this point. But because I'm so over leveled he just survives. The Oak Sage also really helping with that. Like I have 2500 HP I don't know how much he has. But it's gonna be way more than me. And for the Infector of Souls, he spawns Stone Skin, which means he's immune to physical and immune to fire. So I have to hurricane him down. And then it's time for the big guy himself. It's time for Diablo. Who does absolutely nothing to me as I demolish his life total. His lightning misses me, he tries to pimp slap me a bunch, but he just doesn't deal enough damage. So he dies. Then for the Bloody Foothills, I... Notice very late that my Oak Sage is dead, so I spend a lot of time at 1100 HP instead of 2500. But it's just me fighting against Shank and making my way towards the end. The Thorned Hulks are definitely very dangerous though, like look at how hard they're hitting. I'm taking a thousand damage by just random Thorned Hulks. Which is absolutely bonkers. But Shank goes down very easily, so I go towards Lazurk for my final socket quest and I finally end up socketing my helmet. So I have a plus 3 NATO helmet and I decide to just put in a bunch of perfect rubies because I just have good resistances. And I was like I don't know what else I want. I also gamble some final stuff so I get a 60 life belt with some resist before making it towards the glacial trail. Where the champion snow drifters are waiting for me with a warm welcome. And drop a winged helm and that's a Guillaume's. Which is just an excellent mercenary helmet. Because now it means that even the mercenary just has crushing blow and he can just kill stuff so easily. So I go ahead and move along in the glacial trail where the rest of the boss packs are waiting for me. This is another one of these areas that is just so dense when you get double density runs. But the tornadoes are very easily cutting a path through this. And as I mentioned before, the other stuff, like the main stuff, like the ancients, bail, the boss fights, act bosses, stuff like that. All of those are a lot easier when you're like... 10 to 12 levels higher than you usually are. So I'm usually like level 70, 72 ish around here. I believe it was like level 81 or something at this point, 82 or something. Like I was way higher level, and you can tell because I just very easily kill them. I literally just walk up to them and shoot at them and kill them. So yeah, that's definitely not where the hard part of this run is. It's way more in the just getting through the game, making sure that you deal with the boss packs and stuff. But yeah, a very enjoyable run altogether. If you want to try it, I highly recommend it. Oh, I'm level 8. I'm sorry, I'm level 85 even. Like, Jesus Christ. That's like 13, 14 levels higher than I usually am. So I literally just have another max skill that I usually just don't have. And then for the final areas of the game, the first one is, of course, the World Zone Keep level 1, which is, of course, filled with a lot of stuff. So I go ahead and pick up another 35k and a Balrog skin as I try and deal with all of these ghoul lords. Which all goes well and the second one ends up dropping me a set Colossus Blade. So I have a Barrow skin and a Colossus Blade. And that's one of the things that just happens in a run like this. You find so many items. It's a Bull Cutter Sacred Charge and this has knockback removed in Diablo 2 Resurrected. So now it's much better. You can actually use it. And in the World Zone Keep there are a few Soul Killers just waiting for my arrival. So yes, that is literally a screen full of Soul Killers. 
But I get to tornado them. But there's a champion blood boss here as well. And you can just see by the amount of items on the ground. Like how many things you have to deal with in a run like this. So I go towards the throne of destruction. Where I am immediately greeted with a final fuck you from the game. I get souls shooting at me immediately. So I go back towards the souls and tornado the crap out of them. Out of sheer spite I could have just walked away. But I'm, I'm not gonna take that. Come on now. And for the really final thing in this run, it's just once more souls, things that can cause lower resist, things that get fanaticism, like all of it's here. Just one final farewell from the run, but it does go down. So all that's left at this point is just clearing out the final stragglers here. And make my way towards the bale waves. And with that burning soul going down. It's the final like irregular enemy of the game. And the rest of it is just a normal bale run. So we go ahead and very easily clear the first four waves. Which are followed up by the minions of destruction. Who even on this are still one of the hardest things to fight in the game. So they end up killing my oak sage. Which almost kills my mercenary. And they are still just tanking this. Like the minions of destruction are so insanely powerful. So I end up using my strategy with the Oak Sage again. Where I use it to either buy time or lure them out. As I throw a few tornadoes and hope they walk through it. Which of course happens when the tornadoes go all the way to the left instead of towards the enemies. So yeah the final hard part of this run is still as usual the minions of destruction. Which is kind of insane. I, these guys should not be this difficult. Also I need to be very careful here. Because if I lure them back too much. There's a bunch of souls waiting for me. And souls plus the minions of destruction. Is just going to be a really bad time. You can see the lightning like scattering in the corner over there. But I do end up killing them. So we head towards Bale. Where I go for the freest Bale fight of all time. I find a unique Vecina on the way. And that with the crushing blow combined just makes very short work of Bale. As you can tell he just can't really attack or do anything. That's because the slow of the Vecina just makes him so slow his attacks don't work anymore. Like he's literally just broken at this point. So it makes for a very free Bale fight. And with that the run's done. I... I can highly recommend trying this out for yourself. If you're ever like, man, I can do a solo self-found character. I don't have too many problems doing that. Try a double density run. It's doable, but very enjoyable. And depending on what builds you use, it's very difficult of just same old. Like if you use a Javazon for this, you're gonna plow through it very easily. But we made it. So this is my final build. I'm level 85. I have good resistances, 3k HP. I have the NATO build, as you can tell. With Oak Sage, and this is my gear. I have a plus 3 NATO, 114 life helmet, spirit, that's so crappy. Trank's gloves, 12 resist all ring, stealth, this bladed belt with resist and life, a 21 fire resist ring, a 19 resist all prismatic amulet, a gothic shield with a perfect diamond in it, and some boots, nothing on the other side. The mercenary has a Kelpie snare or a inside, depending on what I need, a shelter lamb, and a winged helm. And there we have it, Guardian Double. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.